It is week 10 in the National Football League. It is time to make our confidence picks. Let's do it. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watt2K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. If you enjoy what you're watching, thumbs up is always appreciated. So it is time to make our confidence picks for the upcoming week of NFL football. For those watching for the first time, we take the number of games each week. This week there are 14. So we are going to pick winners. From 14 all the way to 1, the game we're most confident in, we're going to rate it 14. The game we're least confident in, we're going to rate it 1, and we're trying to get as many points as possible. Now, let's take a look at last week and see how we did. Week 9, we did pretty well, pretty well. We went 10-3. and three. Unfortunately, the game that we had the most confidence in was a loss. <laughs> but everything else went pretty well. Out of a possible 92 points, we got 73. And for the season, that puts us at the 91.9% mark. Uh, the total record for the year is 85 wins and 50 losses, and we total 680 points. So feeling pretty good. I was trying to break that 90% barrier, and we are there. Let's uh, get even higher than that right now. All right, so let's start talking about these games. My number 14 game, the game I have the most confidence in, I'm going to go with the Houston Texans at the New York Giants. I like the Giants in this game. I don't think the Texans have the defense to stop Saquon Barkley and quarterback Daniel Jones from running the ball. I do think that Damian Pierce can have a pretty good game for Houston running the ball if they don't fall behind early. But you know what? I'm just a big fan of Wayne Martindale as the Giants offensive uh, or defensive coordinator. Excuse me. I don't expect a blowout. I just have a lot of confidence the Giants will find a way to pull this game out late. My number 13 game is the Monday night game, NFC East rivalry. The uh, Washington Commissaries against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. I'm going with the Eagles to stay undefeated. I think Hertz will present a lot of issues for the Washington defense. Uh, they are 1-4, Washington is, when they allow more than 200 yards passing to the other team. Washington might hang in the game for a while, but I'd say Philly takes it late. My number 12 game is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead. I think this will be another close game. I don't think you're going to see too many blowouts uh, this week. I really don't. And to be honest with you, if I was picking the spread, I think I would be going with Jacksonville. I think it's a single-digit game. But I do think that uh, Isaiah and Clyde and some uh, Patrick Mahomes RPOs will do very well against a very bad Jacksonville run defense. Kansas City has the top scoring offense in the NFL. I think it proves to be too much. My number 11 game is the kind of game that is probably going to be, this is the so bad that you got to watch game. It's like, it's like watching the inevitable crash in an auto race. You don't want to watch, but you can't turn away. The Colts at the Raiders. I think whoever loses this, their fans can just start doing mock drafts right now. I don't know what circumstances would lead me to taking the Colts this season. I know that the Raiders are going to be missing Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro on offense. But Indianapolis, after all the tumultuousity, to coin a word, you know, the tumultuous nature of their week, hiring a broadcaster to be their head coach, a play caller who uh, I don't, he's never called a play in his life. I, I think the little uh, play calling uh, guy from the movie Little Giants would have been more qualified. I mean, then they could have run the annexation of Puerto Rico. Maybe they should have done that. But uh, Indy averages nine points per game on the road. If the Raiders can't take advantage of this Colts team, oh, ends are going to roll. Number 10, we're going to go with the Cowboys at the Packers. Give me Dallas in this game. Mike McCarthy returns to Lambeau Field against his former team, who have dropped five straight games. The Packers are just a, maybe the most beat-up team in the league physically and mentally. Tons of injuries, and they're doubting themselves. I think Micah Parsons is going to have a scary good game. Uh, Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott will feast on a bad Green Bay run defense. Green Bay is allowing 138 yards per game on the ground. So give me, give me Dallas to do well. Hey, maybe Dak will even run for a score or two in this game. 
My number nine is going to be the Sunday morning game from Munich, Germany, the Seahawks versus the Buccaneers. I wonder, what direction will the Seahawks fly their airplane? I mean, when you're on Washington, you fly to Germany. Does it? Is there really a big difference if you're flying west versus if you're flying east? I don't know. But the uh, Seahawks have won four straight games, and at some point it just has to end. I know Tampa Bay beat L.A. last week. They beat the Rams. Big freaking deal. The Rams aren't exactly uh, the same team that they were when they won the Super Bowl. But I do think Tampa Bay will get this win by maybe four or five points and start to uh, pull away in the south. I, and I just think uh, I can't see Seattle winning five straight. Just can't do it. My number eight game is the Broncos at the Titans. Ryan Tannehill will return a quarterback for this. If it was Malik Willis, I think I would take Denver to win that game based off the strength of their defense. But at the end of the day, it's the head coaches. Yeah, Mike Vrabel, you got Nathaniel Hackett. Give me Mike Vrabel every day of the week, and they're not playing this game at Mile High Stadium, Tennessee. Okay, number seven. This will be this will be a good game if you like offense. The Cleveland Browns at the Miami Dolphins. Well, the Browns are coming off a bye, and now they've got a tough test to fly down south to face a very hot offense. The Dolphins are rolling. It's going to present a huge challenge to a Cleveland defense that has been struggling most of the year. Uh, Tua is 6-0 in games that he has both started and finished. I definitely think it's going to be high scoring by both sides, but I'm going to say Bradley Chubb has uh, his first sack for the uh, for the Dolphins. So give me Miami to, to take this one. Number six in the Battle of California, you got the Chargers going against the 49ers. This one I kind of went back and forth on, but here's why I'm going to take the Niners. The Chargers are coming off back-to-back -back road games. The Niners are coming off a bye. Uh, I don't see the Chargers' run defense being good enough to stop Christian McCaffrey, and Debo Samuel should be back for this game as well. The only thing that gives me a little bit of hesitation is the Chargers are a good road team. They're 3-1 th and one on the road, but I think the Niners are ready to uh, get that, make that big run. I think they're eventually going to take the NFC West, so give me San Francisco. My number five game, we're going to go with the Saints at the Steelers. Ugh. Okay, here's what I'm going to say about the Saints. I don't need to see Andy Dalton play quarterback ever again. I wish they would just start Taysom Hill if they're not going to play Jameis Winston. I did not like at all how the Saints looked at, on the Monday night game against Baltimore. And they all, and they had several key players leave that game with injuries. Pete Warner at linebacker, Marcus Davenport, a fierce pass rusher, Eric McCoy, he's out. Uh, Bradley Roby and Michael Thomas are on injured reserve. The Saints have the worst special teams in the league and the worst turnover ratio in the league as well. Oh, and T.J. Watt. He's going to be back on the defensive line for Pittsburgh. He may be on a snap count, but I got a good feeling he's going to make a big impact with those limited snaps. So I am going to go with the Steelers in that game. All right, number four. I'm going to go to the NFC West this game, the Arizona Cardinals against the LA Rams. Tough one to call. The Rams usually seem to do well in Arizona. I'm taking the Rams. Both quarterbacks have some issues going on right now. You got Matthew Stafford in concussion protocol. Kyler Murray has a hamstring injury. If he can't run, you've taken away by far the best part of his offensive game. Uh, the Rams, here's what I'll say. The Rams are 29th in the NFL in scoring offense. They've scored 24 points just one time this year, but the Cardinals have allowed 30 or more points in three straight games. If the Rams can't get right in this game, I don't know what if when it's ever going to happen. I'm going to go with the Rams. Okay, number three, NFC South. We got the Atlanta Falcons at the Carolina Panthers. Now, these teams played just two weeks ago uh, a 37-34 thriller. The Falcons are used to playing close games. I'm taking them. They've got something to play for this game. The Panthers looked absolutely lifeless against Cincinnati. I mean, it was it it was just it was hurting the fans' feelings. It was hurting the Bengals' fans' feeling watching that game. The Falcons also have Cordell Patterson, who did not play in this last game. I think he makes a difference. Uh, give me the Falcons. Number two, okay. Lions at Bears in the NFC North Division. I expect a Fields Day. Uh, Detroit is 31st in the league in run defense. They're allowing 148 rushing yards per game. That plays right into the hands of Justin Fields. Uh, I expected, you know what, though? I expected a high-scoring game last week when the Lions played the Packers and not even 30 points were scored. And you can tell me that the Lions' defense is getting a little better than it was. Okay, that means it's improved from horrific to downright bad. They're allowing 21 points over their last three games on average. 
I say the Bears take it at home. And I think you'll see the beginning of a good uh, of a good passing game. I think Chase Claypool will uh, have a, at least one or two big plays for the Bears against this Lions secondary. Okay, my number one game, the game I've got the least confidence in, is the game I'll be watching closest on Sunday. The Minnesota Vikings at the Buffalo Bills. I am going to take the Minnesota Vikings to hand the Bills their second straight loss. Now let's talk about it. Linebacker Zadarius Smith is tied for the league lead in tackles for loss. He's got eight and a half sacks. TJ Hawkinson uh, caught all nine of his targets last week in his first game as a Viking. He had 70 yards receiving. The Bills are expected to be missing Greg Rousseau. Matt Milano, Jordan Poyer, and Tredavious White. That defense is going to be in a lot of trouble uh, trying to stop this Minnesota offense. And uh, I, I guess the one thing, though, that bears a little bit of watching, if Josh Allen doesn't play this game, Case Keenum is the backup, you know, he and Stephon Diggs kind of know each other a little bit. You know, we all remember the Minneapolis miracle, but hearing those elbow reports about Josh Allen, I, I think it's uh, actually going to be enough to at least limit him. And with the Minnesota defense being as good as it is, I think that's enough. And Minnesota wins this game. All right. Well, what picks uh, that, did I make that you agree with? What do you disagree with? Do you have any big upset specials? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.